We are still solving the WASI 2024 elective mathematics paper 2. Question number 15 on vectors and mechanics. Forces F1 10 newton 120 degrees, F2 12 newton 210 degrees, and F3 15 newton 60 degrees act on a body. Calculate the magnitude of the resultant force, the direction of the resultant force. The force that will keep the body in equilibrium so you can share this video i would like you to share the video with your colleagues thank you for doing that now let's solve this question so the resultant force we we to find the resultant force we add f1 f2 and f3 so we know F1 is given by 10 newton 120 degrees, that is the direction and magnitude. So we have to convert it to the column vector form. So we resolve each of these vectors using the formula um, sine theta magnitude of the force times sine theta. Then we have magnitude of the force times cos theta. So that is what we are using to resolve the forces. So we will get R to be equal to 10 sine 120 degrees. Then we have 10 cos 120 degrees. Then we add it to 12, 12 sine 210 degrees. Then we have 12 cos 210 degrees. Then we have 15 sine 60 degrees. Then we have 15 cos 60 degrees. So we have finished resolving the forces. We have to simplify this. So the resultant, the resultant force will be equal to 5 root 3. That is sine 120. Then negative 3 cos 120. We add it to 12 sine 210, which is negative 6. Then 12 cos 210 is negative 6 root 3. Then we add it to 15 sine 60, which is 15, 15 root 3 over 2. And then 15 cos 60 is 15 over 2. So when we add all of these things, we add this to this to this, we are getting um 25 root 3 over 2 minus 6 then we have 5 over 2 minus 6 root 3 5 over 2 minus 6 root 3 uh, when we write it in decimal form we will get 15.65 then we have negative 7.89. So that is the resultant force. So we have to find the magnitude of the resultant force. So the magnitude of the resultant force is given by R. R magnitude is equal to square root of square root of 15. 0.65 squared we add it to negative 7.889 squared so this will give us square root of 307.1746 and that will give us 17.526 so this is equal to 17.53 Newtons. So that is the magnitude of the resultant force. Then we want to find the direction of the resultant force. So to find the direction of the resultant force, we can quickly sketch the resultant vector. So the resultant vector R is the x axis and the y axis. So it will be somewhere around here because this is negative 7 
Then over here we have 15.65. So this angle here is alpha. So we know that tan alpha will be equal to 90. So this angle is 90. So 90, okay, tan alpha will be equal to opposite which is 7.89 over 15.65 so when we find tan inverse of this tan inverse of 7.89 if you can use the full value 7.8923 89205 then 15.6506.35 so 15.6506.35 and that will give us 26.760904 so the direction of the resultant vector will be from here plus this one so the direction direction of the resultant will be equal to 90 plus 26.76 that will give us 116.76 degrees so the force that will keep the body in equilibrium has to be added to the resultant force plus the equilibrium force will be equal to zero the zero vector so the resultant force was let's say we have 15.65 then negative 7.89 plus the force that will keep the body in equilibrium and should give us the zero force so we have f that will keep the body in equilibrium is equal to the zero zero minus 15.65 then negative 7.89 so that force will be equal to negative 15.65 then 7.89 this force will have the same magnitude as the resultant which is so which will be 17.53 but the direction will be now uh, this one is negative the x is negative and the y is positive so we'll be in the third quadrant so we have 26 plus this is 90 this is 80 270 so that will be 296 296 296 so 296.76 296.76 degrees so that is that will be the force that will keep the body in equilibrium.